Yeah, I think these guys are. They're obviously very frustrated during that during that period. They're not playing the type of baseball that they're accustomed to, so there was some frustration there. It's one of the stars of the Phillies show joining us right now on FT. It's Ruben Amaro. Ruben, great to see you. How you doing? I'm doing great, guys. How's it going? It's hey, have the whole it's Hello good. Fresh thing, man. He got me mouth watering already. <laughs> it is lunchtime. My, my, it's cl- it's getting close for me. I mean, I'm still on uh, East Coast time, but uh, I will tell you that my kids uh, do subscribe and and uh, they they dig it, man. It's it's big for them. They're you know college, they're just out of school, just out of college, and I think it's a real convenient thing for them too. It's awesome. It's a good call. Yeah, I know you're on the West Coast, so I actually want to start on a series that you're not at, and then we'll get into what the Phillies and Mariners just did. But your thoughts on Shohei Otani's season and if he might get an MVP vote for you and a 30-30 season now that could be a 40-40 season by the time we get to the end of the year. Three stolen bases on that Saturday game. What do you think? He's pretty good? Uh, He's okay. Yeah. No, I think I, I think uh, I, I'm sort of old school when it comes to like the MVP voting, but in this case, I mean, he's. Let I, I think about um, I think about most valuable players, and I think about how important they are to the team, to teams that are good and are in contention. Um, I think that's an important element of it, and I think about I think about where the Dodgers would be right now if Shohei Otani was not Shohei Otani. I mean, it's ridiculous what he's doing. And if they he wasn't there, there is no way that they'd be fending off the San Diego Padres right now. Uh, with the loss of Mookie Betts, with the loss of a bunch of other guys. Again, the DH position, a little tough to, you know, a little tough to sort of uh, value what he could bring to the table. I mean, if he played in the outfield and right field, it'd probably be a gold glover. I always thought that, you know, I I actually believe that if he just threw away the, 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 the pitcher's glove and decided to just be an everyday player, he'd probably be a perennial MVP type player because I think he'd be a great outfielder as well because he's such a good athlete. Um, that said, in this instance, just because of the value that you bring to the uh, – to the Dodgers, I think this is a this is an MVP candidate, and I, I think it's hard to argue anymore. Ruben, listen, you can't argue with it. You you summed it up. I'm an old school guy like you. Like I don't understand how the most valuable player on a team could be on a team that loses 100 games or misses the playoffs in April. How can that be the most valuable guy? Give me the guy that's keeping his team in it and leading his team to the postseason. And you nailed it for me, Shohei. Without Shohei Otani, the Dodgers would be. Geez, they might be in second, third, fourth place. Who knows where they'd be because, you know, Mookie's missed time. Obviously, Freddie has the family situation, which we're all thankful that, you know, the, the update, the positive updates that have come out for Freddie. But I'm going to ask you this. Was Shohei Otani contract worth it? I mean, I don't know if it's worth it, but uh, it's not my money. He's the best player I've ever seen. <laughs> He's the best player. I mean, is any are were any of us any worth the uh, worth our money? I just I don't know. I just feel like um, I was I was worth all my money. I was worth every cent. I actually got more money. Yeah. Well, I I never I I wasn't very good, so I I was probably I don't even know if I I know I wasn't worth my money, but. Um, but I think the re- I think the reality of it is, I mean, it's the marketplace, man. I mean, this guy is an iconic player. He is somebody. <laughs> it's hard. I mean, they talk about unicorns, man. This is what he is. Uh, he's maybe one of the best pitchers in baseball when he's healthy, and he's clearly one of the best offensive players. I mean, Aaron Judge has a lot to say about that because he's a beast. Um, but. Uh, but, but I mean, Otani's just amazing, man. The fact that he's done what he's done as far as the power and speed in the game and what he's, uh, what he's accomplishing right now is just amazing. And, uh, you cannot discount that, uh, even though he's a DH. I mean, this, 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 I mean, <laughs> is, is Soto going to be worth 500, $700 million? I don't know. Um, but all I know is that he is in the huge market. I think that it um, at the end of the day, the L.A. Dodgers are going to be pretty damn happy that they made this deal. Agreed. Cam, you good? 
Yeah, I want I want to talk about the Phillies. I, we I think we we, we call Ruben to talk about the Phillies. Enough enough Dodgers. I want to get, I want to get to the Phillies. <laughs> I want to get to I want to get to the Phillies and what he's seen honestly here over the last 18 days, the last month or so. Cuz for me, Ruben, when I'm watching, you know, and and through experience, you know, one every team is going to go through this, right? I don't think there's a team in baseball that's not going to go through through some hiccups. One it lets you know just how long our season is. But two, I'm just watching a team of guys who I feel like just maybe trying to do a little too much instead of actually doing less when less is more. What are you seeing right now as you watch the Phillies go through these struggles? Uh, and, and a great job yesterday trying to, you know, figure out a way to get a win however you can. Some things start to go their way, even from Brandon Marsh, that ball falling in his glove. But what are you seeing as far as these guys? Are they trying to do too much? Is it a little bit too much pressure on the boys right now? What are you seeing? Tim, I think you just, I think you absolutely nailed it because I, I think that's exactly right. I mean, I talked to Charlie Manuel about hitting all the time, right? And when you're in that box and you're, and you're trying to do a little bit too much and you're putting the heat on yourself, your, your body does not react the same way. Your mind and your body don't, don't sync up. When you're going good, everything's smooth and easy and relaxed. Um, and, and, and I just feel like I've, I've never seen a team. I don't know if I've ever seen a, a team where the, the entire collective club, for like the last, I don't know, month or so, as you said, they literally all went into a slump. I mean, there was not, other than maybe Castellanos a little bit, everybody was dead, dead in the water. And, um, you know, I, I, I've never really seen that before. This is too talented a club um, for them to have this happen in a sustained way. I know it hasn't been a, uh, a great, you know, month and a half or so as far as their record is concerned, but this team is just way too talented. Uh, not to get things back on track. And and you're right. I mean, Wheeler came and, and became the stopper. Um, I think he's one of the best, if not the best, uh, pitchers in baseball. Um, and it was huge for them to, to uh, for him to, to pitch the way he did to salvage that one game on Sunday. Um, and it was also great to see uh, Bryce Harper bust out of it mm-hmm. because, I mean, he is such a vital part. I know the first three guys in that lineup, they're going to, grab the bulk of the at bats and they're really important in Schwarber Turner and, and Harper. Uh, but it's nice to see Harper bust down. Now Turner has not Turner was unconscious for the first couple of, uh, first couple of months while any, you know, during the time that he was not hurt. I mean, he was just incredible. His MVP, he had like MVP type numbers, uh, got hurt. And now he's sort of, uh, been struggling as of late, but another guy that at some point he's going to get hot again. And these guys are going to take off. Somebody's going to pay for the fact that these guys were struggling for a while. Well, that was my question. Does this show how important Harper was? Because what was he? He was like one for 30-something, one for 33 or some some crazy number. I mean, this shows the value of Bryce Harper, right? We just talked about Otani for MVP. I mean, Harper goes one for 33. The Phillies lose six games in a row. It seems like maybe they need him just just a wee bit, I know. Yeah, I mean, just a bit. <laughs> I mean, I think I think this helps his MVP case for 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 someone like me that looks at it as like we talked yes. about it, more of an old school view. Like he didn't he struggled, they struggle, right? Everyone else, boom, 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 whatever they're doing. But Bryce Harper one for thirty, we lose six games in a row. Now Wheeler went out and absolutely shoved yesterday. But guess what? Bryce Harper got what three hits, three or four hits yesterday. Got three knocks, yeah, and a, a three run home run. Yeah, uh, the home run. Yeah, I, I wasn't even gonna I wasn't even gonna go there, but I mean. That was the key for me. Harper got hot. I know Schwarber let off the game with a homer, but Harper three hits. Guess what? Phillies win. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, he's obviously a, a an MVP candidate, and I, and I had him as a front runner until he went into a little bit of the slump, and then Shohei just going nuts. So it's going to be a hell of a race between those two. I think. I, I really think it's going to come down to those two guys as far as the MVP candidacy candidacy is 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 uh concerned now somebody might step forward and somebody might go go nuts for the next you know month and a half but or two months but um but they're certainly uh you know, those two at the top of the ticket as far as the you know, running in that um I, I i think that harper is just super vital to this team um i do think that they have some depth to, to baby if he does go if he does go south um that they have enough depth in their lineup to be able to handle things that said, he is incredibly vital to this ball club. Um, he's one of the best players of our era. He's going to be a Hall of Famer. He's hitting milestones that are ridiculous. Three thousand just got his three thousandth uh, uh, base, I guess, uh, total base, um, and uh, two hundred and fifty doubles uh, the other day. 
uh, just an amazing player, and he's going he's to be playing for a long time because he takes care of himself. Big shout out to America's number one meal kit, HelloFresh, for helping us eat good during this busy time of the year for us. With HelloFresh, you get pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. It's home cooking made easy, fun, and affordable. HelloFresh makes it easy, even for picky eaters like Scott. There's a changing menu of 50 recipes to choose from each week. Customize it to fit your taste. There's protein and veggie swap options too. The recipes are easy to follow. Just choose your delivery day, open your box, cook, and eat. My house is busy with sports, but family dinners are important. My fam eats better, healthier, and we cook so much easier with HelloFresh. And for a limited time, kids eat free. Go to HelloFresh.com slash FTKids to unlock this exclusive offer. One free kid's meal per box for two months while subscription is active. That's free kids meals just by going to HelloFresh.com slash FTKids. Let me ask you this. What do you think is a bigger issue when you have teams just riddled with injuries and, and, and they're struggling? Or you have a team like the Phillies who they're actually – fully healthy for for the most part and they're just going through a bad stretch for me you know i think i look at the positive hey these guys are going through some some tough stretches right now but they're healthy so like you said they're going to come out of it what's the feeling in that clubhouse because they have a resilient group of guys what are you hearing yeah i think these guys are so they're obviously very frustrated during that during that period they're not playing the type of baseball that they're accustomed to so there was some frustration there they were dinged up a little bit now they got suarez on the on the il he's a really important part of uh of uh, of their rotation um i think that they they they've lost a little bit of depth there when when uh, he he uh started struggling with his back um, I think he's going to have a uh, a full bullpen on Monday, and I think he's going to get he's getting closer and closer to to coming back. So that's a big deal. You know, you have JT banged up, and when you lose mm-hmm. your when you lose your uh, your catcher, I mean AJ and all you guys know how important that position is, um, especially when you are relying on your starting pitching to have success. That was the big thing. I mean, people were talking about well, these guys aren't hitting. Well, for me, that it was actually the starting pitching that was so dominant in the early part of the season guys started getting banged up a little bit and not quite as effective. And when that started happening, um, you know, that, that, that starts to hit on you, that, that starts to grade on you a little bit and it makes it a little tougher. Um, I always believe in starting pitching as the number one thing. If you have consistent starting pitching, you can always stay in games. Look what uh, the Seattle Mariners, they, they couldn't hit worth a lick. And they stayed in it because their their pitching was their starting pitching and their bullpen was very good as well. Um, and they've stayed in it. And now they're starting to swing the bats a little bit better. But um, uh, I, I really actually believe that um, this is a team that was built on pitching. I know that they have a lot of offensive players. There's no question them big time bats. But the reason why they're having so much success, their starting pitching was really, really good. And that was carrying them for a while. And they got to get some of those guys back. They're missing Taiwan Walker. He's getting closer. He's starting to throw rehabs. And uh, and when Suarez gets back, that'll make them much, much better. I got one more in pitching. Hold that thought, though. I want to show the play yesterday with Brandon Marsh so eloquently catching a fly ball, teaching kids how to get it done. Okay, kids? <laughs> Close your eyes. Put your glove up in the air. Watch the rocket go almost over the wall, but a little – a little before it, way about a foot and a half before it, and it will just land in your glove, right, Cam? Isn't that what you learned when you played outfield? This this literally gave me flashes of Sandlot when they stick him out in the outfield. <laughs> and it's like, hey, he's like, kid, just put your glove up, and, and I'll and I'll hit it to it. But now that was, you know what? I'll actually say this: as an outfielder, I know there was some luck involved in this, Scotty. But you are taught to even when you don't see it, try to run to a spot, right? Run as close as you can to that spot. And then maybe the ball will find you. So that was one of those incredible plays, a play that the Phillies actually needed, right? We talked about things going your way because that whole first half, the Phillies found ways to win ball games. We're here lately. It's like they found ways to lose games. And even a play like that was one of those plays that if that ball falls, if it drops, now here we go again. It's like the fair, the, the wheels falling off. So I think that was one of those plays of, of just the atmosphere going, hey, guys, don't panic. We're going to turn it back around for you. But, hey, let me give Brandon, Mar- Brandon Marshall flowers. Run to a spot, stick your glove up just in case the ball finds you. Yeah, and he's, uh, you're he's sp- saying I can't see, right? You no, know, I like no, that we were able to see that, Ruben. He's like, I can't see. 
Yeah, no doubt. And I, Cam, you were spot on. I, I believe that too. I mean, it was a lucky catch, and he just sort of reacted as it hit his glove. But you're right. He went to the spot. He had the right angle, and he was going to the right spot of uh, uh, on the in the outfield to make the play. And that's all you can ask. The one thing that I, that concerns me about outfield play and those kind of plays is that nobody uses the flip downs anymore. The other the other yeah. the, the flip the flip downs are the only glasses that actually stop the sun from from impeding you from seeing the baseball. The flip downs actually polarize such that you can see the baseball when you're looking into the sun. The other glasses, I think they're cooler and they're neat and they stop the glare. Um, but but nobody nobody ever uses I mean nobody ever uses the ones that they're supposed to use and, and I think they've become obsolete. I, I I don't get it. But again, I'm I'm a little too old school. But I, it was a big play. You you were right about that. I mean, I, I mean, that was one of those plays that maybe it, maybe it turns some things around for the Phillies and they start doing exactly that. Start winning the ball games that they should be winning. And let me add, this is why I love working with Ruben because he's always teaching. And for outfielders out there, what you really want to do is you want to get on the other side of that ball. So if you don't have the flip down glasses, so a little, you know, it's a tough play because Brandon Marsh is running to the gap. But if you can and you don't have those old school flip down glasses, like you said, I don't even I don't even know where you would get them from nowadays, Rube. But you got to get around on the other side of that ball to block the sun. So uh, but but a great job. And I appreciate you always teaching, Ruben. I would say this, uh, honestly, Jackie Bradley Jr. was one of the most instinctive center fielders I've ever been around. And he had and he actually worked on that when he hit. We hit him fly balls from time to time. He would put his body in positions that were real awkward positions so he could work on actually making those plays. And we would actually have that drill when I was coaching in uh, the outfielders in, in New York and Boston. We had like the sun drill where we would, you know, have the guys try to work their bodies so that the angle that they were watching the ball was not the angle looking into the sun. Um, it's it's uh, it, it, it's an important one because, hey, when a pitcher makes a pitch and gets an out, you want it to be an out. Right. And and uh, and that's one of those situations where, I mean, it was it was a big play because it was still a one nothing game. And fortunately, it, it stuck in that glove. Hey, Ruben, I tell you what, when I was coming up with the Twins. We weren't even allowed to wear Oakleys. We could only wear flip downs. So Same try here. being a catcher. Try being a catcher. Tom Kelly's like, you don't wear Oakleys. You don't wear none of that. You got to wear flip downs. I'm like, TK, that doesn't exactly work with a mask. How am I going to flip them, <laughs> flip them down? So yeah, I mean, listen, they're still around. You can still find them in some some places, but they're not as accessible as they used to be. And I agree, man. Those things you I'd goof around with them on the bench, and you flip them down. I could barely see the pitcher from the dugout sometimes. So, right. Yeah, they right. definitely they definitely kill the sun for you. Well, Ruben, we appreciate the time. It's always great to hang out with you. And let's do this while you're on. We'll just give everyone a little sneak peek of what's coming up on the Philly show. It just dropped the latest episode, a little Zach Wheeler conversation to kind of ease some of the concern, the eight inning strong from him yesterday. That, that investment has worked out quite nicely for the Phils. But there's the big threes, the Lackey, Salisbury, and Ruben on the FT Network. You can catch the Philly show on YouTube. Just type in The Philly Show or wherever you get your podcast. Do the same thing. Ruben, thank you. Appreciate you. We'll catch up soon, okay? Great to talk with you guys, all right? Hey, everybody. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content. We're back here every weekday, all year long, so do not miss an episode. The videos are coming in all day. Here's another video you might enjoy. Baseball the way it should be covered.